Hello there, very good evening to you and welcome to the News at 6 here on Rajya Sabha TV. We'll get you the day's top developing stories, what's making news in India and across the world and how it's impacting India as well. I'm Tracy Shulshi and here are the headlines. Panic grips global markets over fears of loan default by Greece. Sensex falls over 600 points in intraday trade, even as experts allay fears over long-term impact. Two deaths in two days. Yet another accused dies in the Madhya Pradesh Vyapam scam case. 25 people involved in the case have died so far. Congress accuses Vasundhara Raji of illegally occupying the Dholpur Palace along with Lalit Modi through a private company. The BJP denies the allegation. 50 founding countries, including India, sign an agreement on the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. The 60-article pact specifies each member's share and governance structure. And most senior pill players are rested for India's tour to Zimbabwe. Ajinkya Rahane to lead the team while Harbhajan Singh and Robin Uttapa make a comeback. Let's start though with a big financial story. Global stock markets plunged after Greece closed all its banks imposing capital controls. This comes in the wake of the ECB's decision not to extend an emergency funding to Greece even as it faces the risk of a default if the debt is not repaid to the IMF by Tuesday. Asian and European stock markets bled on Monday after Greece shut all its banks ahead of the Tuesday deadline to repay its IMF debt. Banks are expected to remain shut at least until 5th July, the date for referendum proposed by Greek PM Alexis Tsipras to decide a way out of the ongoing crisis. Πέρα από το να εκβιάσει τη βούληση του ελληνικού λαού και να παρεμποδίσει την ομαλή δημοκρατική διαδικασία του δημοψηφίσματο. Uh, so there are a multitude of questions that have arisen on the back of this weekend's uh, exercises um, and scarce uh, actual answers. Uh, and when it comes to the markets, they do tend to assume the worst, and that's why we've seen an aggressive sell-off in uh, equities uh, this morning. Eurozone leaders have rallied behind Greece so far. But they have warned of serious consequences of a referendum on the terms of the cash for reforms deal. The EU Economics Commissioner seems optimistic that a deal between Greece and its creditors is pretty close enough. We will alles tun um möglichst Schaden von der Bevölkerung Griechenlands zu wenden. Die Bürger in Griechenland können einem leid tun. Seit heute Morgen sieht man, was es heißt, wenn eine Regierung unverantwortlich handelt. La Grèce doit rester dans la zone euro. La, reste, la Grèce est un pays de la zone euro. Et donc l'enjeu, c'est comment est-ce que nous pouvons parvenir à convaincre le gouvernement grec d'appeler à voter oui. Facing an exit from the euro currency bloc, Greece is set to go for a referendum. The move has angered the international creditors. However, Prime Minister Tsipras is still nailing his hopes on his request for a bailout extension. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And India too is facing the heat of the Greek crisis. Markets saw, uh, saw a sharp decline today. Sell-off plunged uh, Sensex down by over 500 points during intraday trading. The finance secretary too saying that India has yet to drop a plan to deal with the possible fallouts of this crisis. Worries over Greece sparked a sell-off in the markets on Monday. Sensex plunged over 500 points in early trade before recovering to end at 27,645 points, down by 167 points. Nifty 2 slipped below its crucial psychological level of 8,200 as Greece looked set to default on its debt repayment this week. The centre is yet to finalise a strategy to counter any significant fallout of the crisis. However, it is closely monitoring the developments. I said that everything is, you know, this is a dynamic situation, an evolving situation. So you have, but there is no firm plan, there is a, but it has to be assessed and acted upon as situation develops. Mm -hmm. Nobody can predict what the exact situation will be, so there can be no exact plan to that extent. The road Greece preferred was the taxation way, but what they want is cuts in expenditure. But cuts in expenditure can be uh, you know, ridiculous. I, I should say that it, it can be ridiculous because these kind of mindless fiscal austerity measures leads to humanitarian crisis. 
So far, the crisis did not have any direct impact on India. But there may be some indirect effect via Europe on capital outflows. In case there is a firming up of interest rates in Europe, then there may be some outward flows from India. The market also started realizing that it's not as fearful as we have been thinking. So obviously the short position started getting covered. And what we see is that only 200 point fall, which is not a very substantial fall. This is, in a, this is a normal day for the markets. The government is consulting the Reserve Bank of India to deal with the situation. Last week, RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan had said that the economy is expected to withstand any impact from the crisis in Greece. He attributed the stability partly to India's foreign exchange reserves, which reached a record high of $355.46 billion last month. With inputs from Kriti Mishra, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, for more on this, let's speak to economist Akash Jindal joining us in studio this evening. Akash, thanks so much for joining us. If you could just break it down for our viewers, Akash, why does the crisis in Greece impact us? And is it going to be a deeper cut? Uh, it has, uh, you can say, a direct impact on India. Now, why so? Because Greece is an important country for EU, European Union. Now, European Union, we have already seen the impact of your, on European Union. Earlier, say, Greece, uh, the issue has been there for quite some time. But now, with the talks not uh, reaching any conclusive end, and now with the banks being shut for perhaps a week, a symbolic negative message is there. So, EU, we have already seen the damage. Then, if the damage is there in EU, US would also be impacted because EU has very close business ties and otherwise also good connections with America. So what happens is India, and typically when we talk about stock markets, FIIs or foreign investors, a lot of them come from Europe and US. So one could be that FIIs may pull out of India, mm -hmm. they could disinvest in India, they could sell some stocks, or there could be lesser money coming to India. Now this is as far as the stock market is concerned. On a broader basis, when we talk about economy, see, the globe is, the, all the countries are connected with each other in some or the other manner, directly or indirectly. So our business with Greece is not that high. Mm. But as I said, all countries are connected. Now, Greece would have an impact on EU, which would have an impact on US. And US, we have lots and lots of dealing. Mm. Then again, we are looking for some good FDI deals also. We have already launched a good concept of Make in India, where we were expecting a lot of FDI money. Now, with all this happening in Greece, Europe, and final impact on US, there's lesser possibility of uh, FDI coming into India. So that would also have an impact. Though uh, we can say that India is a domestic demand-driven economy, but yes, yes, whatever happens in the world, and particularly an issue like this, see, the symbolic message which has, it has sent to the world, and particularly investors or the man on the road hmm. that banks have been shut for one week is something people are not going to digest or adjust with that easily. So impact or damage is already there, I must mm -hmm. say. Do you so, think that is also is what taking is uh, not just taking India but the world by surprise? The certain, uh, the, the kind of reaction that Greece has come up with and you know all this while people were hopeful that towards by the end of June Perhaps some kind of a rescue operation may be in place. But, uh, you know, just about a day left and nothing seems to be there. And, uh, you know, it seems quite, uh, you know, a sinking situation for, for Greece. What you're saying is really very interesting and pertinent. Now, the problem has been there for quite some time. There have been many, uh, many attempts, many meetings hmm. where bailout has been tried. Yes. But somehow none of the meetings reached a conclusive end and that is what happened with the meeting which was there two days ago. Mm. But now this fallout, though anybody who understood economy or finance, he, he, he knew that this is something which was expected. But yes, you are very right. Man on the road, the symbolic message is definitely bad because it, it comes as a surprise that mm. banks have been shut for perhaps a week. Mm. So definitely this message is something which is not going to go well with people. But yes, one thing is there, I would say that still there is hope. Still there's a possibility that uh, there are that, that, that there could be a deal wherein they could be bailed out. Still there's a possibility. The only thing is that EU as well as Greece, they, they have to come to terms with the realities, I think, of the day. Mm. And one thing is that austerity measures are, are a good step. But in these times, 
I don't think austerity only would solve the issue. Yes. There is a lot more than austerity which needs to be done mm. from EU side also and Greece side also. Still, things can be worked out. So I would say, yes, the damage is there. The damage is quite severe. But things have not reached the point of no return. Okay. Things can still come back to normalcy. Mm. So I, I would say that in Indian economy, we don't, uh, I mean, uh, there is a situation where we have to keep a track of things. We have to be alive to the situation, agile to the situation, but still, mm. it's not a situation, uh, things have not reached at a level of panic. Things All can right. still be resolved, uh, what, what you were trying to ask, yes. As yes. things then could be resolved, the only thing is, Greece and EU, mm. they need to come to terms, they need to agree to certain things and still things can come to a proper point. Is there a glimmer of hope? We are hoping for that. Thanks so much, Akash, for joining us with those details there, trying to break it down for our viewers, making us understand why this crisis is important for even us here in India. Meanwhile, let's head on to some other news. In fact, the biggest story that we're tracking here in India, when the professional examination scam or the Vyapam scam emerged in Madhya Pradesh in 2013, it was considered just another case of candidates paying their way into jobs and colleges. But two years on and 25 deaths later, the irregularities have snowballed into a massive multi-layered scam that promises to uncover some ugly truths. Here are the details. 25 people dead so far, all having some connection to the high-profile Madhya Pradesh Professional Examination Board scam. They were all either accused or witnesses in what has come to be known as the Vyapam scam. But the Madhya Pradesh Home Minister sees nothing fishy in their deaths, terming them all as natural. <laughs> No, no, no. The Supreme Court didn't make it. The whole Vyapam's charge was made by the Supreme Court. Now, this is not to connect someone with that. This is become a trend. If anything happens, it is not to connect someone with that. This is not the case. You should know. Two more accused in the MPPEB scam died in Gwalior and Indore on Sunday. One of those who died, Dr. Rajendra Arya, was accused of helping two students clear pre-medical tests conducted by the MPPEB in 2007 and 2008. The other person who died was Narendra Singh Tomar, an assistant veterinary officer at Ryasin, accused of arranging for imposters to write the papers in place of genuine aspirants. Itna sab kuch hone ke अगर भारतीय जनता पार्टी के नेतृत्व पर उनके कान पे जून आ रहेंगे, तो ठीक है, हम लोग तो अपनी लड़ाई लड़ेंगे। It pains everybody to see that persons who can be vital for the sake of investigation and trial have been targeted and they have lost their lives, and somebody very powerful is acting behind the scene and does not want the truth. To come out. The investigation doesn't inspire confidence. It, it, people don't believe in this investigation. Everybody knows that there is a, this is one of the biggest cover-up stories going on, go, going on anywhere in the world. And nobody's, nobody, nobody today is willing to buy that these deaths are innocent deaths. An SIT submission to the Madhya Pradesh High Court has said that 23 deceased in the MPPEB scam had died unnatural deaths so far. However, unofficial reports put the number at 40. The most high-profile death was that of Shailesh Yadav, the son of Madhya Pradesh Governor Ram Naresh Yadav. The governor was himself an accused in the scam before getting relief from the court. Over 2,000 people have been arrested for their involvement in the scam so far. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. A quick break here, but still ahead, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jalalitha flags off Chennai's first metro rail driven by a woman. Details ahead. No repeat of the Great Depression, says the RBI governor, clarifying on crisis projections. But it's a warning nonetheless. What does it hold for India and the global economy? Watch the big picture at 6.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television.
Welcome back. Now on to news from the capital and the Aam Aadmi Party. Today's stage protests against the BJP demanding the resignations of Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj and Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundara Raje for their alleged help to former IPL Commissioner Lalit Modi. The Congress too stepped up its campaign. Here are the details. The Congress unleashed a fresh batch of accusations against the BJP and Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Raje in the Lalit Modi controversy. The party alleged that Raje illegally occupied the Dholpur Palace along with Lalit Modi through a private company. इन दो व्यक्तियों ने एक राजस्थान के मुख्यमंत्री और एक भगोड़ा ये भगोड़ा और मुख्यमंत्री का एक खेल रहा है लेन-देन रहा है द कांग्रेस क्लेम्स दैट रेवेन्यू डिपार्टमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स बिटवीन 1954 एंड 2010 शोड दैट द पैलेस वाज गवर्नमेंट प्रॉपर्टी बट राजे एंड ललित मोदीज कंपनी नियंत हेरिटेज होटल्स टर्नड इट इनटू अ हाई एंड लग्जरी होटल विद नो रोल ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट तब मोटी मोटी बात समझती है कि ललित मोदी से सुषमा जी के भी रिश्ते हैं ललित मोदी से वसुंधरा राजे के भी रिश्ते हैं और इसमें कुछ ना कुछ सहूलियतें मिली हैं ललित मोदी को ललित ये लोग अगर इस पोजीशन पर नहीं रहते तो वो सहूलियतें शायद उनको न मिल पाती The BJP has refuted the allegations with state party leaders claiming they had documents to disprove the Congress claims आपका पब्लिश हो चुका है सबको मालूम है उसके बावजूद भी कांग्रेस के लोग किस प्रकार से दुरा प्रचार कर रहे हैं ये मैं आप लोगों के सामने रखना चाहता हूं Both the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party are demanding resignations of four BJP ministers including External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and Raje HRD Minister Smriti Irani and Maharashtra Minister Pankaja Munde देश ये माखौल नहीं बनने देगा कि आपके ऊपर इतने गंभीर आरोप और लगजिन पे रहे हैं वो केंद्र की एक मंत्री हैं दूसरी मुख्यमंत्री राजस्थान हैं आपकी शिक्षा मंत्री हैं गंभीर आरोप हैं आप कहते हैं ये आरोप सच्चे हैं झूठे हैं प्रधानमंत्री को आगे बढ़कर बोलना तो चाहिए कि ये सब झूठ Swaraj and Raje are facing criticism over the help they gave to former IPL chairman Lalit Modi to procure British travel papers, while Smriti Irani is facing a court complaint on furnishing incorrect details to the Election Commission. Pankaja Munde has been accused of involvement in a multi-crore scam. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. In other news, the Delhi High Court has refused to stay ACB Chief Mukesh Kumar Meena from discharging his duties. The court said that no interim relief can be granted to the state government. However, the court did issue a notice to the LG and the Centre on Kejriwal government's allegation that Najib Jung imposed his choice on the ACB. After voicing protests over the appointment of ACB Chief Mukesh Kumar Meena, the Kejriwal government lost its appeal to prevent him from entering his office. The Delhi High Court ruled in favour of Meena, who was appointed ACB Chief two weeks ago. Picked by the LG, Meena outranked the AAP government's appointee SS Yadav as the ACB chief. AAP objected to the move, accusing Meena of going soft on corruption. We have kept our own thoughts on them. And then, as if there is a gun that is being put in there, as if there is a gun that is being put in there, we are fighting. We are fighting against a bad guy. There is a bad guy who is sitting there. It just goes to show the farce that Aam Aadmi Party is. Now, they, want, they have picked up an issue on an issue where it doesn't have any reality. It is the allegations are all false, but they do not want to introspect and answer on many issues which relates and indicts Aam Aadmi Party. Aap government had accused the LG of imposing his choice on ACB chief's appointment and interfering in the government's functioning. The court issued notice to LG Najib Jung and the centre on the matter, asking them to respond within two weeks. Meanwhile, the Delhi government withdrew its second plea to make Meena personally a party to the petition after HC indicated its disapproval. As far as the two applications filed by the Delhi government are concerned, the first application for impeachment of Mr. Meena has been withdrawn by the Delhi government because the court observed that this application is not required. As far as the second application, restraining Mr. Meena from interfering in the work of ACB and entering the office of the ACB is concerned, the court has simply issued notice in the matter 
and not passed any restraint orders. The court has simply said that Mr. Meena will continue to work in accordance with law as he has been doing in the past. My argument was that the posting of paramilitary forces, that is CRPC and Rajasthan police, inside a police station is utterly, thoroughly illegal and unconstitutional. Uh, my argument was also that this has been done uh, by the Lieutenant Governor uh, because there was a threat that some FRs will be filed against him for his role in the transport scam. Since his election, Kejriwal has accused the centre of using the Lieutenant Governor to run Delhi by proxy. The two officers have been at loggerheads over appointments of several bureaucrats over the past few months. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And for more updates from across the country, let's get you nationwide. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jayalalitha flagged out the first train of the Chennai Metro Rail today. She inaugurated the service via live video from the state secretariat. The first schedule started today at 12.15pm from Alandar Station to Koyambet. Union Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu today ordered a high-level inquiry into the freak accident that took place at South Mumbai's Churchgate station on Sunday. He assured via a tweet that all responsibilities will be fixed and action will be taken. Delhi Lieutenant Governor Najib Jang today ordered a magisterial inquiry into the daring jail break incident at Tihar Jail where two under trials managed to escape. The inquiry will also review the security setup of Delhi prisons along with the circumstances leading to that jailbreak. While one of the convicts has been caught, the other is still missing. Now, in a major boost to economic diplomacy, India and Thailand have signed several key agreements, including a double taxation avoidance treaty. This provides the framework to avoid double taxation and fiscal evasion with respect to taxes. On the security front also, both countries exchanged the instruments of ratification on the extradition treaty inked in 2013. On the final day of her three-day official visit to Thailand, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj inked a number of important agreements with her Thai counterpart. The most important one being the Double Taxation Avoidance Treaty. This treaty not only provides the framework to avoid double taxation, but also prevents fiscal evasion with respect to taxes. Seeking to further enhance bilateral cooperation, both leaders stressed on their commitment to advance common interests. My government attaches great importance to our bilateral partnership and is committed to further enhance the engagement for mutual benefit. Thailand's look west policy and India's act east policy complement very well. His statement was further elaborated by the Thai Foreign Ministry website. It read, and I quote, India's act east policy reflects its interest in the Dawei Deep Sea port, which is seen as a strategic location connecting India and Southeast Asia through Thailand. Thailand's look west policy is designed to strengthen cooperation with India and the other South Asian countries. The foreign ministers of both countries also exchanged instruments of ratification on the extradition treaty inked in 2013. This treaty provides the legal framework for seeking extradition of fugitive offenders, including those involved in terrorism, transnational crimes and economic offences. They also signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of Nalanda University. By signing this agreement, Thailand joins other East Asian summit countries in the establishment of Nalanda University in Bihar. An MOU on the establishment of an Ayurveda chair in one of the Thai universities is another big takeaway from Swaraj's Thailand visit. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And another big step towards the establishment of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank was taken on Monday as the member nations, including India, signed a draft charter in Beijing. With a capital of $100 billion, the Asian Bank is designed to finance infrastructure in Asia and rival the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. China hosted the signing ceremony on Monday to kickstart the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank or AIIB. Delegates from 15 nations signed articles that determined their individual share and the bank's initial capital. The new financial institution is set to rival the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. 
China, India and Russia are the three largest shareholders, holding stakes of 30.34%, 8.52% and 6.66% respectively. Their voting shares are calculated at 26.06%, 7.5% and 5.92%. This kind of open and open attitude, uh, according to the Chinese government, uh, first, 要先成立，那么成立以后呢，才会有理事会，那么理事会再进行开会。Chinese President Xi Jinping proposed the AIIB in October 2013. A year later, 21 Asian nations, including China, India, Malaysia, Pakistan and Singapore, signed an agreement to establish the bank. The UK, Germany, Australia and South Korea are among the founding members. The AIIB will have an authorized capital of 100 billion US dollars, while Asian countries will contribute up to 75% of the total capital. Each member will be allocated a share of the quota based on their economic size. The bank, headquartered in Beijing, will fund Asian energy, transport and infrastructure projects. Japan and the US that oppose the AIIB are the most prominent countries not to join. The US has questioned governance standards at the new institution, which it sees as spreading Chinese soft power and tried to persuade others to stay away. China, on the other hand, hailed the founding of the bank as a historic day. 我们很高兴啊，筹建工作取得今天这样的成果。Let me also highlight the great importance that Switzerland attaches to the compliance with international standards in terms of governance, transparency, and best practices. World Bank President Jim Kong Gim welcomed the signing of the Articles of Agreement. He admitted that the world spends about one trillion US dollars a year on infrastructure, but a vast majority goes to developed countries. The AIIB is expected to go into operation later this year. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now let's get into some sports news. And in cricket, Harbhajan Singh will stage a comeback to the ODI squad after a gap of four years as a second string team was today named for the next month's tour of Zimbabwe. The selectors opted to rest most of the senior players. Regular test and ODI skippers MS Dhoni and Virat Kohli will be missing in action this time. Openers Rohit Sharma, Shikhar Dhawan and off-spinner R. Ashwin too have been rested. The changes were made after a disastrous ODI series against Bangladesh recently. In their absence, Ajinkya Rahane will lead the side. Apart from Harbhajan Singh, Robin Uttapa also made a return to the ODI side. Sandeep Sharma and Karan Sharma were also included in this team. And now let's get you some more quick updates from the world of sports. Indian shacklers Jwala Gota and Ashwini Ponapa have won the Canada Open Badminton Championship. They defeated the top-seeded Dutch pair of Muskin Spiek by 21-19, 21-16. This was the Indian shacklers' first title since their reunion after the 2012 London Olympics. Top seeds in the men's and women's singles will be in action today on day one of the Wimbledon Championship. Novak Djokovic will face Germany's Paul Schreiber in the first round, while in the women's singles, top seed Serena Williams will take on the unseeded Kasper Jan. Sri Lanka defeated Pakistan by seven wickets in the second test in Colombo to level the three-match series. Chasing a target of 153 runs, the host faced a race in fact to victory in 26.3 overs. Sri Lankan seamer Tamika Prasad was declared man of the match for his all-round performance that included seven wickets. Both teams will play the decisive third test in Palakal on Friday. And that's all we have for you on the News at 6. Thanks so much for joining us.